Hello and welcome back to tutorial 1D. Hello Reaper, working with video items and the use of tracks. In this tutorial we are going to talk about importing video items into a Reaper session. And uh, we already prepared something for you up here in the Media Explorer window uh, about how to do that. As you can see we have several video files in this folder. One is MP4 and the next one is a ProRes encoded video file. And the third one is a DNxHR encoded video file. Um, the difference between them is like H.264 is basically for uh, made, uh, a lot of cameras record with that so it's easy to import. Reaper works with that, but it is not very exact to work with in an audio workstation. And it also uh, is a little bit heavy on the CPU because it needs to re-encode things on the spot. So if you have uh, quite some tracks, then the CPU usage can get really high. We don't want that, so that's why we recommend strongly to use a ProRes encoded file or a DNx HR encoded file. The ProRes is mainly coming from OS X platforms and DNx HR will be probably coming from Windows. For this session I'm going to use uh, the ProRes uh, file because it's uh, easy, I have it at hand. And from the one of three ways of importing it, we can use a shortcut to make a new track. We can use um, a double click on the track control panel to make a new track. I am going to choose the other method, which is just dragging it from the Explorer window into our edit window. At the same time, I'm going to import a little audio file to it. And as you can see, um, you can basically not see that it is a video file by the look of the item. Um, we have some tricks for that which are coming up, but as you can see here, um, we have a video window and uh, we can play back the audio. So that all works very fine. For now, it is the easiest we're going to mark how we are going to uh, distinguish this track from another track that we have. First of all, we're going to rename it to video and then we can color the track as well. To do that, we are going to use the context menu. The context menu is uh, reached over control click or a right mouse click if you are using a mouse and you can set the track color with this item you get a color chooser uh, well, it's a palette already defined but you can add your own if you like and I always use black for uh, items I'm not using very much or which just have to stay steady so as we can see now the top track, when it's not highlighted, is colored black, including the item itself. So I know, okay, this is something I'm not probably not going to touch very much. At the moment, if we play back, we can hear the audio, but that's not always desired. Because if we have uh, a lot of audio which we have already prepared for uh, the video ourselves and which is included in the session, then uh, actually we don't want to hear the audio which is on the video. Be still. We have audio here. We mute the track. The night, folk. Oops. Also, the video disappears. So, this is maybe not an option. But luckily, Reaper provides us with a method to easily access the muting of the audio if we press command F2, F2 being one of the function 
um, buttons sometimes they're in the bar or usually on a normal keyboard they're just a key by themselves and we reach the video item properties and you can see below here that it has a little tick box which says ignore audio we're going to tick that and the audio has disappeared from the item so if we now play it back you can see you can hear we only have the video then we have another track below which is shall find having some alone. audio in it Mid dark thoughts of the gray tombstone. And we notice it is text. So we're also going to give this a color. And uh, we'll come back to this later, but we uh, are conformed to uh, text tracks being yellow in our studio. So that's what we want to do here as well. We'll just color this yellow, make it a little bit more yellowish. I'll drag this to the palette so I have it easily accessible. And we have a yellow track here. So, um, there's one more thing which I would like to show you with the video tracks. We can easily duplicate tracks, and that's what we're going to do here. And the shortcut for duplicating a track is Shift D. So, if I select the track, press shift D, we have duplicated track. Now, why do I want to show you that? Well, basically because there is a, um, a priority on tracks which are being shown in the video window. I can move this and you can see that in the video window, nothing is moving at all. And if I now click on this item above, you can see that actually the image is moving. So the top video window takes priority over the bottom window, or in other words, the lower the channel, the track uh, number, the, the more uh, priority it has over the higher track numbers. Our next subject in this video will quickly introduce you to screen sets because screen sets are very practical in Reaper. You can define your own screen sets completely. We pre-configured here, uh, one here for you at the moment to, uh, to give you the Media Explorer and the uh, video window. If you want to play back video, you think it's a little bit small, you want to have a bit of a bigger experience, you can just double click on the video window to get it full screen or double click on it to get it back into the screen set. And there is a easy way to change actually the layout of this, which will quickly show here by the screen sets layout over when you go over the menu but as we always promote to use shortcuts for this we have prepared uh, a shortcut which is uh, command e now there are several possibilities which we are not going to um, discuss all here at the moment, but um, we have prepared four uh, main layout windows. This can be looking like this. And we have to get back our screen set. We can have no mixer, or we can have a side mixer which have the mixer track over here, or we can go back to our video processing layout, which is where we started from. If I don't know these shortcuts yet, mm -hmm. can I just simply click on the screen set button in the, in this, in the window? 
Yes, you can just okay. double click here. Uh -huh. Or you can use the shortcuts. As we are promoting shortcuts, we, I can now press F10 oh, and cool. I get my video window back as we had it before. That allows for quick workflows, huh? Yes, I think so, yeah. yeah. As you can see here, this part where the screen sets can be chosen, uh, this is part of uh, the window which is tabbed. So there are tabs below here. If we tap on the first tab, we get back to the Media Explorer. Uh, we have a region and a, marger, a marker manager. Uh, those uh, windows we are going to talk about later. We can get to the item properties very quickly. And the fourth is the screen set window. Quickly getting back to the item properties, like if you have produced an animatic and you want to import the next version of the animatic, you can click on the video window or the uh, sorry, you can click on the item and go to item properties and quickly choose a new file. So for instance, if I uh, wanted to, I could oop, Go here and choose another file. For instance, this one, which I think is the DNX HR version. We can open that instead. And we have our new animatic installed. That's handy. The only thing to notice is that, um, of course, uh, the audio is reinstalled, so we had we would have to go back to Apple F2, where we can go back to the video file item pro uh, properties, and we can say ignore audio again to get rid of any possible audio in that media file. What else do you use in the item properties? Uh, well, if there's something you want to rename because you have a name clash or you want to have, uh, um, uh, you want to make uniform names, you can rename a file. For instance, you can say, okay, I want this to be the 2021 version of this file. And save it accordingly hmm. and you can see that this reflected on top here so you know exactly which file you're working with there are a lot of other options included in here but uh, we'll get there uh, when we come to it and one of the last things um, i would like to discuss here is um, as your, uh, your project is getting more and more complex, uh, you will get a lot of tracks and you will get a lot of things together. Different items, you get uh, video tracks as we already see here. We have an um, audio track. This audio track looks mono because there's only like one waveform um, presented in there. I'll just for the sake of it, I will import a stereo file as well. I think it was this one, was it? No, this one. Yes. As you can see, this is a stereo file. It has two waveforms drawn into it. And what we don't want you to do is have mixed uh, property files on one track. So this is a video item. This is a mono file. We would not like you to do that because uh, it will be a big mess in the end. And we also don't want you to have mono and stereo files happening on one track. That's bad habit. Uh, you will start to know it very quickly because um, 
mono files are panned in a completely other way as stereo files will be and uh, it will be a very quick mix up we don't want you to have that we want you to have as clean as possible sessions because it will make your life a lot easier not only that uh, it will also make the life easier for persons working with you because uh, things can be getting very complex and um, I'm going to show you a quick example of that. It can get very big. If, if you count with me here, we are on 172 tracks in one file, which is quite a bit. There is an easy way to navigate in it, which I can show you here under the view menu it is called the navigator which of course also has a shortcut which is command option v so we get a window here and we can use our mouse and the little window representing the bigger window to quickly navigate through all the items this uh, will save you a lot of mileage on your trackpad or on your mouse, whatever you're using. So, um, that's about it for now. I have one more question, Jeroen. Okay. Uh, looks like this session has a, a lot of uh, tracks containing only one or, or sometimes two uh, audio files, sometimes more, but... Yes. Could that be organized better with our workflow we propose? Yes, we would like to propose actually to that uh, you put as many mono files on one track as is like uh, um, practical to do. But uh, don't. That's another reason to not mix up different files and not put everything on a separate track. So keep your session organized because it will save so much time in uh, trying to work out what is actually where and which sound is happening at what moment on what, what track. As you can see, it is pretty uh, complicated to navigate through this session. Although there is even a tool, tool like the navigator like if i hear one separate thing i have to go and see oh we are more or less here in the session so what is actually happening there uh, there is a lot of foley going on and there is some things in the in the music happening so this is really cumbersome if you make your um uh, file or your project file very very big um, the less channel count you have the more easy it is to get around in the file and to know what's happening that was this tutorial 1d uh, the next one will be 1e in our hello reaper series navigation how to navigate the mouse and the trackpad and what is the wheel behavior with the modifier keys Thanks.